Good morning, dear friends, and greetings to all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a very special person in the sight of God. And may God's favor be upon you throughout this day. As we meditate on God's word today, I pray that the Holy Spirit, who is our best teacher of God's word, will lead us into the divine truth of his word. Today's meditation is taken from the 48th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Now, the chapter 48 of Isaiah reveals the spiritual condition of the people of Israel, especially Judah. And uh, if you examine and understand their condition by reading this chapter, you'll realize they were really hypocritical people. Judah was full of people. Why I say hypocritical? This is the reason. Judah was full of people who claimed to follow and worship God. But in reality, they had uh, broken the covenant they had with the Lord. And they had rejected the truth of uh, his word. They were living in rebellion against God. And they had a form of religion. Yet they had denied God his rightful place both in personal and in their national lives. This is the background to this chapter. People must have been longing for peace and joy. They had everything else except peace and except that joyfulness. And those who know our God will always enjoy peace and joy. And uh, so they could not find this genuine, real peace. So God's word came. And what did it say? Verse 18. And uh, my meditation is based on verse 18 of the 48th chapter of Isaiah. It says here, if only you had paid attention to my commands, God says, your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness would have been like the waves of the sea. Peace like a river. It is a figurative language. It is the duty of all who desire peace to listen whenever or however God chooses to speak. You know, it is so amazing. God is always speaking. You know, in the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 3, after each letter it says, Let him who has ears to listen, listen what the Spirit says. And that means Spirit is always speaking. But how many of us really hear anything? We don't hear and we don't listen. Why? We are not tuned ourselves and connected ourselves with this God who delights in speaking to his people. Now, for those who listen with eagerness and wholeheartedly, here is the promise of peace. Peace like a river. Isn't that wonderful? Now, there is a very special purpose why uh, God is using this symbolism. And the peace is compared with a river. And we want to look at this symbolic language. Six things are to be noticed. And so I would like us to consider together, listen very carefully. 
let us think of a river in its origin. How is its origin? It is small and yet joyous and sparkling and rapid. Think of that. And secondly, think of a river in its progress, widening, deepening, are flowing into larger spaces. That's what we see about the river. River as it flows, it, 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 it gets widened and also it gets deeper. And uh, you also uh, find that uh, river uh, receives tributaries as well. And number three, Overflowing abundance. A river speaks of a overflowing abundance. Prophet Isaiah says, perfect peace. And uh, the psalmist says about great peace. And Apostle Paul says, peace of God which passes all understanding. And then Jesus Christ himself said, peace that neither the world can give or take away. It is that peace I give you. It is not a scanty, fluctuating, failing flow, but a full tide of peace, both wide and deep, and supplying every need of the soul. That's why Peace is compared with the river. This is what the river does. It flows, and he, 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 as it flows, it spread life. The land is, fert, 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 is fertilized, and the land is, is, is watered, and there is therefore an overflowing abundance we see about the river. And the fourth thing we do notice is, river suggests perpetuality. You know, though some places hidden uh, in a narrow uh, channel among overhanging hills and forest, again widening some places and narrowing some other places but flowing with a greater velocity. But nevertheless, it is flowing. And uh, you will notice in its source, the force is not much. But as the river becomes wider, and also some places is narrow, the narrower the force will be more. And uh, 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 a powerful, good river. It flows with a greater velocity as it flows and reaches to other areas. And the fifth thing about the river is, river speaks of increase. Now, I want you to remember what our subject is. Our subject is peace like river. Why peace is compared with the river? These are the reason. River speaks of increase. Though the origin may be an insignificant sp uh, spring, far up somewhere in the mountainside, it grows stronger and pervading as it flows. And the sixthly, River speaks of a healthful influence. Earth is fertilized and become productive. Every river has a source. It is always from above. The river depends constantly upon a constant renewed supply. 
That is about a river. And now think of our peace. It is like that. The source of our peace is always from God. God above. He says, I live, I abide in a high and lofty place. And then he says, even the heaven of heavens cannot contain me. And he is the source of our peace. What a marvelous thing is. Above his resources are infinite. And remember, his resources are infinite and his supply shall never fail. Whatever comes from God never exhaust itself. There is always this ongoing flow of his blessings. There is never a shortage when God begins to supply. And it all depends on our capacity to receive how much. The more you receive, the more it keeps flowing into you. And my friends, that's why peace is compared to a river. It has its source, but as it flows from the source, and the source is always above. And the source of our peace is God above, the highest. As Isaiah saw, uh, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. He is always high and lifted up. And he is the source of this river of peace. It flows. And we lack no peace. That's why Apostle Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. And Jesus also in his teaching said, you do not worry about anything. Why? Consider your source. The source of our health, source of our, our, our healing, source of of our uh, provisions and source of our mind, intellectual uh, abilities, and everything is God in above. What a wonderful comfort. By this comfort you live throughout this day. No matter what comes, the peace that comes from God is like a river. It keeps flowing into you as you trust in your God and stand up and say, my God knows this problem was coming and he knows also the end of it and he is in control and he guides me and therefore I am not going to be afraid I will trust in my God and at the end, at the end of the day, he will set everything right. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters and my friends, this is our God. Trust him. He knows you are frail. And when I am weak, I am strong. Why? This is the reason. My strength comes from him. I am strong in his strength. I am perfect in his perfection. And I am joyful in his joy. I am healed in his healing power. I am protected, provided, kept and blessed. Because my Father, He is the source 
of all these blessings. God bless you as you believe this truth and live by the truth. Father, everyone who heard this word this morning, they all need peace. The one thing the world cannot give us. So we trust that today shall be a very special day for the, in the life of many of the listeners. That they shall enjoy true peace and joy. And at the end of the day, they will have reason to glorify you and to praise your wonderful name. In Jesus' name, Amen. My friends, peace is the one thing that the world is lacking. And this is something that money cannot buy. But let God be the source of your peace. Trust in Him. God bless you.